Hi, today I'm going to do a no makeup makeup look. It's a good look for lots of different things. Sometimes I do this kind of look in the evening if I'm wearing something that's quite ornate or very colourful or kind of, you know, very done. It kind of helps you look more modern in a way. Um, but it's great for during the day as well. Um, it's great for loads of occasions. I'm going to pick up my son from a school trip today and I don't want to turn up at the school with makeup on. So, um... Yeah, it's good for, for lots of things. Now, how you do it is completely dependent on your skin tone. There's no one look, no makeup, makeup look for every single person. So I'm gonna talk you through some options. Okay, to start with, I'm going to use, instead of moisturizer, I'm gonna use an oil-free makeup block, which is um, Peter Thomas Roth, and this is this Ultra Light Factor 30, because I don't wanna to have too many products on my skin, and my skin, sort of makes its own moisture really, especially this time of year. I'd also do the backs of my hands and my chest with this and neck. So that's my combined primer, moisturizer and sunblock on. Next I'm gonna use something that's just going to enhance my skin. So give it kind of a very dewy, real look. Um, there's kind of a lot of products on the market at the moment that aren't really highlighters and they're not moisturizers, they're kind of in between. Something like Eclair Miracle by Lancome is good because it's sort of like a primer but it's got some shimmer in but very, very, very low level. Another thing you could use is just your regular highlighter. So whether you've got the Becca Shimmery Skin or whether you've got the Benefit one or whatever, just put a dot of that and mix it in with your moisturiser because that's exactly the same thing. And I'm just going to put this on, onto my cheeks. Just rub it in. It's just going to catch the light, but in a really subtle, no makeup way. So when I'm in daylight and in the sun, it's not going to start twinkling and sparkling and looking all fake. Because I've got oily skin, I'm not going to put it any more than here and here. If you're very dry skinned, you could put a dot with your moisturiser and put it all over just to give your skin a little bit of life. But as I say, go very, very easy on the sparkles and the shimmer because it is meant to be no makeup makeup. It's all about cheating, really, no makeup, makeup. It's a sort of, how can we deceive the eye into thinking there's absolutely no makeup on? And it, it can be done. So whatever you do next depends on how good your skin is. If your skin is great, then um, skip foundation. I'm gonna use a tiny bit of foundation. I'm gonna use some Healthy Mix by Bourjois, um, but I'm not gonna use it everywhere. I'm just gonna put a little dot around my mouth here. Let's see where else. Just wherever I'm a bit, got a bit of pigmentation. And then just blend that in. I like this foundation because you can't see it. I've looked at it through a, a magnifying mirror. I've got a massive times 20 or something magnifying mirror that I always check foundations in. And this one, you can't see it sitting on the skin. Okay, so next I'm gonna use a light reflective pen. I'm gonna use the Fusion Beauty one which I like because it's almost like a cross between a concealer and a light reflective pen. Some of them are very, very thin and very, very light reflective and can go a little bit ashy. This one, like the Clinique one that I like, it's got a little bit more meat to it. So um, it sort of, it does more, it works harder. This one's light, but they have other colors. And I'm gonna use this everywhere I think. I just need a bit of lightening up. So this is great if you have any pigmentation or just to make your skin look fresher. So for me, I'm gonna use it all around here, into the corner of my nose, a little bit on my chin. And then I'm gonna blend that with fingers as well. You can use a brush if you want, but You can see it's just giving a little bit more coverage, but also it's just lightening up my dark areas, my areas that are a little bit red. But because it's so thin, it's not gonna be sitting on the skin and looking like makeup. Next, I'm gonna use it under my eyes for the dark shadows, a little bit into the corner I'm gonna use it here as well. It's always a good point as well, just at the side of the eyes there, because that can drag your eyes down a lot if you've got the red line that goes down, or again, if you've got pigmentation there. 
Now, if you've got any little blemishes and things, something like this may be enough to cover them. It depends how bad they are. I've got a couple here and here. I'm not sure if this is going to cut it, really. It's softening them down, but I probably would... Depends what it was for. If I was doing it really perfectly because I was going out in the evening, I would go in with something with a bit more coverage. So something like Cover FX in light. Yeah, this is the light one. I don't know if any, guys, any of you guys have used these, but they're really funny because they look so dark. And then even the light one looks incredibly dark. But when you blend it onto the skin, it lightens up. I almost didn't believe them when they told me when I was buying it. And... Um, they were recommending the light one, and I was thinking, okay, that's bright orange. But it does work. If you really blend it in, it just lightens up. So something like this, I would just use on anything that can't be covered by the other pen. If you've got a little bit of time to spend on it, within reason, spend most of the time on your skin. Because if your skin's perfected, it's amazing how little you can get away with everywhere else. So that's all the little bits and pieces concealed. And really, touch of powder, you could stop there. Just curl your eyelashes and put a little bit of tinted lip balm on. And um, that would be a nice no makeup makeup. But I'm going to go further and do all the other areas of the face. So I'm going to save a little bit of the Cover FX. This is a really good alternative for people who can't get the Vichy Derma Blend that I used in my acne covering. Because it's very pliable, but it also has good coverage. So... Um, although I love the Vichy Derma Blend, I know it is a little bit hard to get and also the colours aren't amazing, so um, that could be a, um, an alternative. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is... Oh, sorry, yeah, the reason I saved this in my back here is because I'm going to put something on my cheeks and I might need to do a little tiny bit more concealing. So for cheeks, um, it depends really. The thing about no makeup makeup is, if you think of someone like Emmanuel Alt, who's the editor of French Vogue, who always does the chicest no makeup makeup and looks incredible, but she's very tanned and bronzy and um, has very dark hair. So for her, a no makeup makeup look is more of a bronzy bit of bronzer and a tiny bit of black eyeliner and lip balm, and she looks great. But depending on your colouring, it depends what colour you're going to use to look like that. So for me, it wouldn't necessarily be bronzer um, and it would be sort of lightish tones. But the darker your skin is, um, you have to really consider what... You have to sort of work with the natural colour of your skin tone when you're doing no makeup makeup. There's no point doing... Um, like a nude lip if your lips are naturally quite pink because then you're going to look done rather than undone. So work with the tones in your skin. So for example, I'm going to do something for my cheeks now. So I'm not going to do anything really peachy or really bright pink because my skin tends to go, when I blush naturally, a sort of lightish pink um, and it doesn't go too orangey because I'm not too olivey. So I'm going to use something like, I think, Powder Pink, which is one of the Bobbi Brown paint, um, what is it called? Pot Rouges. But if you had dark, a darker skin tone, you could use Pink Truffle, which is beautiful. Actually, this works on loads of skin tones. Pink Truffle is great. Um, if you're lighter, a little bit more peachy, peaches and cream, something like that sort of a colour would be good. So, yeah, think about the natural colour in your skin anyway. You could just use your, whatever lipstick you use when you want to look really natural, just use that. So whatever you use to make your lips look like their own lips but slightly more enhanced, just use that on your cheeks. Works just as well. So I'm going to use powder pink because it's not too pink, it's not too brown, it's not too orangey and it's going to work with my skin which is pale, has a little bit of a yellow undertone and has a bit of pink. So I'm going to pop a bit onto my cheeks. Just pat on first, and then I'm just going to blend that in. And you just want to use it where you would blush naturally. So if you imagine you've been for a walk, where your skin naturally goes pink. If you have a lot of red naturally in your skin, what I would suggest doing is just taking it away where you don't like it. So if you've got naturally red cheeks, but they go down here, use the concealer just to take this away and leave your natural, um, the redness in your cheeks, because that looks really beautiful. I'm also going to use this on my lips.
As I say, I want my lips to look the same colour, more or less, as they normally are, just slightly enhanced. Now I'm going to use some powder because I have combination skin. I'm going to use some of the Coro's powder, brightening powder. And you don't want to over powder for no makeup makeup, so just wherever you need it. Now onto the eyes. You can go as far as you like with this. I'm going to start by curling my eyelashes. Now again, you could just leave it there. Curled eyelashes on their own look great. Or you could use a serum just to give them a little bit of shine. And also it's looking after them. I'm going to go on and use some mascara. I'm going to use DJV Butanizer, and this is Fiber Wig LX Mascara. So unlike a regular mascara, this is adding fiber, so it's making the hair look longer, but it doesn't look like regular mascara. So again, you could leave it there. Or if you need to do a little bit of eyebrows, if you have very sparse eyebrows or you have gaps to fill in, I'm going to use a powder I'm going to use. This is eyeshadow, it's called Bossy by Benefit, with a little brush. And for no makeup makeup, you don't want to have a, a line at the top. You don't want to have them so defined. So I think it's better just to put a little bit here and there to fill in the odd gap, but you don't want to have that really defined brow. That's all you need to do. With the same color, if you have either sort of droopy eyelids or they're quite hooded and you really need some definition, you can use exactly the same color that you used on your brows with a 217, take most of it off the brush, so it's very, very soft, raise your brows and just put in a touch of shadow, but again, it's not to look like makeup, so just to give a definition. And if your eyes are either hooded or they just need a bit of a lift, just relax your eyes and add a tiny bit of shadow in there but it should look completely natural, so not like eyeshadow at all, which is why using a matte one is really good, because a small amount of matte will just look like a natural shadow. Again, you could leave it there. If you're someone that can never go out the house without your eyeliner on, then just use eyeliner in a slightly different way. I'm gonna use the Inglot. I'm gonna use brown, because this is gonna suit me, but if you're very, very pale, blonde, use something that's a bit more greyish. Um, and again, if you're really, really dark, then you can use a black pencil. What I'm gonna do is instead of using a line, I'm just gonna massage that in to the roots of the lashes because I just want to make my lashes look a little bit thicker. Feels a bit strange, but it does work. And you end up with outer lines. So it's not on the waterline, it's just above the waterline into the roots of the lashes. And if you've done it right, it won't even need blending. And all it does is just make your eyelashes look thicker and give you that little bit of definition, but no one would ever know you're wearing liner. A couple of dots there, just to thicken up my lash line. But go on with a, a light hand, the fairer you are. And to finish off, and you really don't need to do this if you don't want to, but um, I'm going to use a matte bronzer. I'm going to use the Bourjois Matte Bronzer. Take a little bit onto a brush and... I'm going to touch onto my neck because my neck is a little bit paler than my face. And then I'm going to use just a fraction, hardly any at all, just onto the side. So that's a finished look, and I think the main things to remember with no makeup makeup to achieve it in a in a believable way is that you don't want any lines anywhere, so no lines across the brow, no visible lines of the eyeliner, no visible line of contour or blusher or lip liner. Everything needs to be very blended and almost in synergy with the skin. Also texture wise, anything really, really glossy or shiny or shimmery is not natural. So you want everything to be very on the low down and very sort of subtle, subtle, subtle. And then in terms of color, remember that no makeup makeup colors are different for every single skin tone. So bear in mind, the natural colours that are within your skin and, and, and you're trying to just emphasise and bring those out. And you can do it very, very simply, just like I did in the beginning, which is lightening the shadowy areas and just doing a little bit of perfecting and curling your eyelashes. Or you can do everything and sort of embellish your whole face but still look like you're not wearing any makeup. So although it doesn't look actually all that different, if you look at the before, now against this you can see that it actually does make a huge difference so um, i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you soon